Okay, so iOS 18 has just been released to the public. You can actually go download it right now. And in this video, I wanna go over the four features that I've personally found to be incredibly useful after testing iOS 18 for the past month. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and let's get into it. So the first thing you'll probably notice is this incredibly strange looking home screen. So you may have heard this already, but in iOS 18, we can now finally put app icons anywhere on the home screen grid. As you can see, I've gone with a really strange two column look. And what led me to do this was actually the large mode. So normally it actually looks like this, but there is this new large mode, which removes all of the app labels and make the icons slightly bigger. And I found that with large, it tends to look a little bit goofy when there's a bunch of icons on the screen. So I've basically stripped it down to my 10 most used apps. Of course I have different pages, but all the widgets are gone. And as you can see, the app labels are also gone. This is a pretty interesting look. It's not for everybody. It does take some time to get used to, but I quite like it. It looks pretty unique. And at the end of the day, customizing your phone is all about just trying to find something that works for you and that you like. The one thing that I did wish that Apple gave us the option was in the app library, I wish that the app labels were back because some of these icons, like, I don't know what these apps are. And so Apple, if you're listening to this, give us the option to put app labels in the app library while using large mode. That would be nice. There are other ways to customize your home screen. So now there is a dark mode, which is super cool. As you can see, all the app icons have changed. The wallpaper has dimmed significantly. And the cool thing here is that even though iOS 18 is still in beta, there are a lot of third party app icons that are now being supported with dark mode. Google Photos, YouTube Studio, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Discord. And yeah, overall, definitely a huge fan of the dark theme uh, instead of having your eyes blasted by your phone at night. Now it's definitely a lot better. Now there is one other mode that I'll briefly touch on and that is tinted icons. And so this one has stirred a bit of controversy in the iPhone land. Some people think it looks really bad. I think it looks okay in some situations. I mean, this white theme looks pretty clean. I'm probably not gonna rock it, uh, but I know some people out there might like it. Where it becomes a problem though is with certain color combinations. So red, for instance. And so as you can see, all of the Apple first party widgets are looking completely fine, but these third party ones like the Tesla one and the birthday widget are looking a little bit scuffed. I'm definitely gonna be staying away from the tinted mode, at least for now until Apple maybe fixes it. But still, I think the light mode and the dark mode are still probably gonna be my preferred uh, way to view these icons. By the way, if you're interested in this wallpaper, I'll have it linked down below for you to purchase to support the channel. Okay, next up, we've got some major improvements to the Apple Calendar app. One thing that I really hated on iOS 17 was the month view because this is essentially useless. Uh, all we got were these little gray dots as to uh, what was going on that date, but we couldn't really zoom in. And the only way to see what's going on is to actually tap into that day. It was actually really hard to get a good overview of what's happening that month. But now in iOS 18, as you can see, we have a detailed view of our month, which is really cool. You can actually pinch out uh, to see some different colors if you have different calendars and then zoom all the way in uh, to get a really detailed view of either your week or the entire month. This definitely makes Apple Calendar way more useful now. Google Calendar has actually had this in their iOS app for quite some time. So uh, it's nice to see Apple finally catching up. And then the other change that I'm a huge fan of is the reminders integration. So now in iOS 18, when you create a event, you can actually pick between an event or a reminder. I think Apple should have just done this a long time ago. And the reason I think it's such a great update is reminders always have some sort of timeline attached to it, right? Like when, if you're trying to remind yourself to do something, you're never gonna get it done unless it has a timeline. And so whether it's taking out the trash, watering the plants or whatever you might be doing, I just think it makes a lot of sense to have it be shown in one app, like your calendar app. Now, of course, these reminders are still gonna show up in the reminders app. And so it's not like you can only view these in your calendar, uh, but it is nice that it's now all integrated in calendar. Now, one way I've been taking advantage of this integration is with weekly reminders. So every Wednesday, I've set up a reminder to water my plants and I can pretty easily easily just take it off right there. Also something pretty neat is if I create another reminder at the same exact time and date, you can see that now there are two reminders that are stacked on top of each other, which is actually pretty neat and I'm liking this interface. And then of course, another way to add a reminder, let's say I wanted to remind me to call mom at 7 p.m. today. 
you can see that just popped up right there. So uh, some really neat ways to add reminders and just to be way more organized and productive in your day. It's these little differences, in my opinion, that make all of the difference for me. And this is definitely top of the list in terms of best iOS updates. Now, another really great quality of life feature is the new control center. So now there are multiple pages, but not only that, you can also press and hold and customize it the exact same way that you would your home screen. And on top of that, you can click add a control and there are so many things that you can add in here. One tip that I can give you is you should just add settings to this screen. This is actually pretty easy to do. Just hit add a control and then scroll down until you see open app hit open app and then tap in and now you can choose which app you wanna open. Also, if you see any of these handles down here, you can actually just drag it and make that button bigger. I've also added some other quick access shortcuts like the flashlight and a calculator as well as my front door smart lock. I've also completely removed the mute switch. Uh, and so I've had my phone on vibrate for the past probably at least five to 10 years. And so I just straight up removed that toggle and instead, I've added a couple of useful ones here. Now, going from left to right, the way I've set this up, uh, screen record, dark mode, screen mirroring, and Apple TV remote, those are all pretty self-explanatory. But these ones, I think, are new to iOS 18 and are some of the coolest ones that I think you should look into. So this first one is voice memos. So you can actually tap it, and it'll immediately start recording a voice memo. Not only that, if I actually end it and then go into that voice memo, if you hit this button down on the bottom left, you can see there are now transcriptions, which is actually really nice for trying to find that one specific voice memo. Uh, you can actually just scrub through it in text form. This one right here is a QR code scanner, which comes in clutch for restaurants, uh, scanning QR codes for menus. And then this next one, I wanna ask you guys who are also on the beta, does this actually work for you? So. This is called vehicle motion cues, which is supposedly uh, to help with vehicle motion sickness. If you're using your phone in a moving vehicle, these dots will actually move with the vehicle. I haven't found any difference at all using my phone with it and without it. So you guys let me know down below, does it actually work for you or not? Next to that one, we've got Shazam. So now I can just tap on it and know what music is playing in the background. And so yeah, this is how I've set up my control center. I think this is a really sick update. Okay, this is a feature that we've been waiting forever for Apple to do, and finally we have it, and that is RCS support for iPhones. RCS stands for Rich Communication Services, and what it allows you to do is text Android phones with some of the same features as iMessage. Now, I've got my Pixel 8 Pro and my iPhone 15 Pro here, and as you can see on the bottom, it says RCS message. On the left, it also says RCS. And so, as I start typing on my Android phone, you can see on the iPhone, we now get typing indicators, which is crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit send. It's gonna show up on my iPhone pretty much instantaneously. I can also react to this message on the Android phone with an emoji, and it'll show up on the iPhone in the same way. You know what, this is a little bit sad. Let me change it to a laughing face. Okay, there we go. And then also vice versa, if I say, How's it going? On my iPhone, you can see there's a typing indicator on the Android, which is also pretty cool. And it comes up pretty much instantaneously. As you can see here, there's also red receipts. But actually, I think the biggest game changer here is that sending photos and videos are so much better. So I sent this video from the Android phone to the iPhone. And if I actually pull up the same video on both devices, you can see that the quality is pretty much the exact same. And Believe it or not, when I went to compare the two file sizes, they were exactly the same. So no compression going on, it's sending the full size video, which is crazy. So yeah, it honestly seems like gone are the days that uh, sending photos or videos from an Android to an iPhone is gonna come out like a pixelated mess. It seems like iOS 18 pretty much solves all of those issues. Definitely a huge win for both iPhones and Androids. Now, last but not least, one of my favorite features in iOS 18 in messages is send later. By the way, in case you didn't know, you can actually reshuffle these around. And so if there's things that you frequently use down here, you can actually drag it all the way up here. 
But yeah, send later is definitely one of my favorite features. I've used this uh, when I had a thought or wanted to text a friend, but it was just way too late at night. Also scheduling birthday messages is really convenient with this, but you don't wanna do it at like 9 a.m. You wanna do it at like 9.02 a.m., you know? I can simply schedule a message that says happy birthday and it'll show up sort of like in these uh, dotted lines. Not only that, I can also schedule a GIF. And so I can actually send this after that one. Uh, I can also send a photo, stickers, uh, anything you want, text effects. If you wanted to edit the time, you can also go up here, hit edit. Uh, and you can change the time. But yeah, that's been it. Those are some of my favorite features and how I've been using iOS 18. Hopefully you got some good value out of this. If it did, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. All right, hope you guys have a good one. Catch you next time. Peace.